Hello, welcome back. Now in previous videos, we've talked about how to measure dose using ionization chambers. But that is not the only way to measure dose, and there are other devices that are available to measure dose that have um, some convenient features for ap different applications. So I'm going to go over, I'm going to do this in a series of videos, uh, and I'm going to go over three main devices. Okay, so first is a diode. Second is luminescent dosimeters, and third is film. So we'll go through those one, two, three. This first video, the topic is uh, the diode devices. Here we go. So here is one of these diode detectors. This particular one is used for scanning across a beam. Uh, the active area is on the tip of the device here. And you'll see the uh, circle is uh, seven millimeters wide, but the, actually the active diode inside here is only one millimeter square, and it's only 30 microns thick. So that's one of the main advantages of this type of detector, is that it's very small in size, but still gives you a good signal. So uh, let's look at how these diodes work on a fundamental level. So in considering diodes for radiotherapy applications, they're usually made of silicon. It's a special type of silicon. Here I'm drawing it. This is a N-type silicon, it's called. That means it's doped with an impurity that gives extra electrons to the material. And then that's uh, sandwiched next to another silicon uh, slab over here. And that's a P-type silicon. So that's doped with an impurity that gives holes, or areas where electrons can go. In this configuration, the electrons move over here to the left, and the holes, or the receptor areas for electrons, move over here to the right uh, to kind of fill, fill up the vacancies. And when that happens, there's this region in the middle. That's called the depletion region, uh, the area where the charges are depleted from. It's a relatively small region. Uh, and because it's so small, or well, because the charges uh, aggregate, there's a voltage across that region. It's typically one volt. Now, it's very, like I said, it's very small, maybe a few microns, for example, or something small like that. Because of that, the field is very large across there. So you, uh, the charges are uh, accelerated, and then you collect those um, charges on these electrodes that are connected to either side. So now let's imagine a photon comes in, or maybe an electron comes in and it's, uh, it's it, there's an electron in the material and then it's accelerated to this side and you collect that as a charge on the electrode which you can measure just kind of like in an ion chamber. So there are some clear advantages and disadvantages to diodes so let me list these out. On the good side they give an instant readout of the dose. So that has some applications so you can for example, uh, scan across a beam. You can also do in vivo readings as a, a detector, for example, a readout on a patient and get an instant readout on a surface. They're very sensitive. They can measure small doses and measure them accurately. And they're also compact, as I said before. So they might have, for example, a 0.6 millimeter radius uh, active region. And the result of that is that uh, scanning with them is very accurate. You can look at small fields and you can get a very good measurement of sharp penumbra. Um, there's no bias on these detectors, no voltage that you apply to it. Okay, and so that's good because they could be used in vivo where you don't want to use high voltages. And they're very rugged, they're very durable. Okay, on the other side of the column, the disadvantages are things to be aware of, let's say. Number one, there is an energy response of, of these detectors. And the reason for that is that the effective Z of the detector is not equivalent to tissue or water. It's much higher. And so therefore, the detector will over-respond to low energy photons and electrons, as you can imagine. And so, um, so depending on how the spectrum of the beam changes, the response of the detector might change. So there are several practical kind of manifestations of that. So there's a, a field size effect uh, dependence of, to the response. The detector will respond differently in wedge beams versus open. 
and, and other, other situations and examples. These detectors also have a temperature dependence. So their output will change depending on temperature and it's about 0.5% per degrees centigrade. They have a directional dependence. In other words, if the beam comes in at an angle, it will respond differently. And you can see that here if I draw a picture of the diode, the beam coming down straight or a beam coming down sideways. Uh, and I can make a plot of the response. It kind of looks like this with um, an over response of about 5% when you're at 45 degree angle. Okay. Uh, then also they um, can be damaged when they receive radiation. So it's about 0.1% at uh, one kilogray. And then they also have a dose rate dependence. That dependence is somewhat complex. Uh, it depends on the instantaneous dose rate. There can therefore be an SSD dependence. Uh, that dependency is somewhat complex because like I say, it, uh, the response depends more on the instantaneous dose rate, the dose rate in a LINAC pulse. Uh, but there can be uh, some dependence on the average dose rate where you might see that SSD effect. And the point is that you should check it and make sure. Okay, so those are the some of the overall advantages and limitations of the diode devices. All right, now I'd like to say a few things about the way that diodes can be configured because they can come in different forms for different applications. So the one I'm showing here, this is a scanning diode that's used to measure radiotherapy beams. So um, it can be used in this application. This is a water tank that sits under the LINAC uh, filled with water. And then you can see that the diode uh, device is mounted in the center here on a holder and now here you can see the motors on rails and so the device can be scanned back and forth left and right up and down here i'm showing the device being scanned up through the water towards uh, the surface of the water so the water is at let's say 100 ssd and in that case this would be taking a pdd curve a percent depth dose right and the dose would go up as you reach the top of the water and then peak at d max that's how this curve is measured. So here we're outside the room and we're actually going to acquire data through uh, that scan that I just showed you. And you see the dose is building up as you go from a deep depth to more shallow. In real time, the beam is on running as you're doing this. Now, of course, you can scan uh, not only with diodes, but you can scan with chambers as well. Um, so it's a, sort of a general uh, kind of a general purpose thing, but here I'm talking about diodes in this particular video. Here you see we're reaching up near near Dmax. It's going to get up near 100 percent and now it's going to get into the buildup region. So there you go. Here's another example of scanning. So if you look down on the right, the diode is scanning across the beam in this case. And on the left, you'll see the acquisition out in the control room. Here we're near the center of the beam and we're going across the center and to the other side and then we're scanning through the penumbra it goes down and so diode as i said before it's small it gives you a nice reading of the penumbra now i want to mention one more thing about the configuration of diodes for scanning this is a diagram showing a particular diode and this is a photon diode a diode meant for scanning photon beams all right and as i mentioned it's a small uh, active area here millimeter squared and you'll see um, where it's located. Now, on the right is an electron diode. So that, as you can imagine, is for scanning electron beams. It's a little different than the photon diode, and particularly the active area is right there, right near the tip. It is uh, 0.76 millimeters behind the front surface, or water equivalent depth of 1.3 millimeters. That's quite different than the photon diode, which is two millimeters behind this front surface. And the difference there um, is important. So the photon diode will be shielded more from low energy photons that are scattered in, which would make this detector over respond, like I said before. And so the shielded photon diode is better for those beams. And so that's, you would use that for the photon beam. You also have this kind of diode that some manufacturers make called the SRS diode, stereotactic radiosurgery diode, photon diode. 
and it's meant for measuring dose and profiles in very small beams, those small beams that are used for SRS. And uh, the main difference in an SRS diode here, you got 175 nanocoulombs per gray, let's say. That's the output of this diode for this particular manufacturer. Versus a regular photon diode that's more like 9 nanocoulombs per gray. So, so that higher sensitivity, the higher charge per unit gray, is useful for these small fields which have low doses. All right, now I want to switch gears and talk about a different configuration for diodes which uh, is useful in a clinic. So these are diodes as used for in vivo dosimetry. So that means measuring dose in vivo on the patient during treatment. Those are placed on the skin of the patient typically, and they got wires and they give you an instant readout of dose at that point. So let's look at what these uh, look like inside. I'll draw a little sketch here. So this part is just the kind of the holder of the diode, it, not really active, but here's the active area of the diode in blue here. And uh, then of course the uh, beam comes down from the top, so that's a photon beam. Now you can't measure the photons directly, you need a conversion of the photons into electrons. Um, and so you have this little thing here, this is the buildup cap for that, that's going to turn the photons into the electrons. You have different size buildup caps for different energy beams. And then we have a connection, electrode connecting to the active area coming out here, and you read a charge Q, and that can be converted into a dose. All right, so before we leave diodes, I want to mention one last thing about them, which is that they are not used typically for absolute dosimetry. So absolute dosimetry means calibrating your machine, finding out the you know, number of centigrade per MU. That, that's done with an ion chamber, as we talked about in the last videos. So diodes are more useful for measuring relative dose, like scanning across a beam, getting a profile, scanning up and down in a beam, getting a PDD. And uh, the diode can be cross-calibrated to one of those absolute standards established with an ion chamber and then you can get a reading that gives you centigrade or gray. But it's not itself used for determining absolute dosimetry, so that's important to keep in mind. And it's also true of the other detectors that we're going to talk about in this series, the, the luminescent uh, detectors and film. So they're good for relative dosimetry or as a double check of an absolute dose calibration, but they're not themselves used as a primary standard. All right, so those are the basics of diode devices, uh, which have many applications um, <clears throat> because of their quick uh, readout time and their ease of use and their robustness. I'm going to leave you with a little further reading about diodes. And then in the next video, we're going to talk about <clears throat> the next kind of radiation measurement device, which is luminescent dosimeters. Thank you. <laughs>